and an airlift is nothing more than that $600 gun that Goodson sells. I just ram that hose up in there. Use what you got, folks. So the 2014 Subaru Outback with 110,000 miles on the vehicle came in with a grotesque head gasket leak. Uh, the customer only wants to pay for head gaskets. I was able to convince them to do the upper oil pan while I'm here because it is starting to seep out a little bit as you can see right here. And the upcharge on that is only an extra hour and a half of labor. I wanna show you uh, what an engine looks like on the inside when you're not doing these decarb services. Some people call them top engine cleaners. Uh, consumers might call them snake oil. All right, this is the inside of the pistons. It just looks like burnt on dirt. I do have a solvent helping break that up and I'm gonna go ahead and clean that up. I'm gonna have to rotate the crank over by hand to raise the piston up so I can get it without harming the cylinder walls. Let's look more closely at the head. So, upon inspection, when I was taking it apart, I told the customer, this, is, this one exhaust valve right here, this is uh, cylinder number two, no, this is cylinder number four, cylinder number four, 100% sure, because this is the EGR pipe. I explained to him, I said, this is uh, extremely wet. It shouldn't be like that. And he wasn't answering my phone calls, but I'm just gonna go ahead and tear this apart because it only takes me a little extra longer and I'm sure I can convince him to pay me for the work but I'm not letting him spend thousands of dollars and not replace two cents worth of valve stem seals now why did the valve stem seals go out I've had a lot of these cars just live on the same valve stem for a couple hundred thousand miles honestly I believe it comes from the carb Okay, these are new stems by the way. So these new ones are gonna go in this cylinder head. This is what the, how the valves are looking. I'm not seeing too much carbon tracking here on the valves, but on the port side, yeah, a lot of carbon tracking. So basically the carbon you can see how it just piles up. I'm gonna try and get a flashlight. Hey, we got some light now. Okay, see how it's just layering up on itself? It eventually works its way up to the valve seat and then it doesn't allow your valves to close properly. Uh, especially on exhaust valves, they take the most heat and those suckers heat up and I think that they just uh, basically just overheated our valve stem seals. Now, thankfully, there was, we had no wobble on the valve stem seals, so we're not gonna have to ream anything out and re-sleeve those. Everything was fine. These just got a little bit on the, the hard side and they got leaky. All right, so. Got everything cleaned up the best that I can. Uh, all I have at my disposal is one of those good guys. Still got just a little bit of graphite material from the head gasket that I gotta work off. Not too much to worry about right now. The runners, got the, all that carving cleaned up out of there. We made a huge mess. Be careful with laying this head. Looking all good here. And we'll roll her over to our exhaust. Much, much better. Okay. This cylinder has got to breathe so much better. All right, here's our valves. Got them all scrubbed up clean. Try and get in. The margins look good. Valve seats, they look really, really good too. All right, so now we're gonna use this tool right here. It's got a part number, I don't know, some generic. Uh...
This is just a generic valve stem seal puller that I found on eBay. You don't need to spend more than nine bucks for those things. Let's see if we find anything. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty toasted. Pretty toasted. You wanna at least try to use one of these tools to pull up these seals because you don't wanna scratch or put a burr on anything which would result in the new seals getting scratched going in. So if they're not moving, I'll show you a trick. Because sometimes they do get nice and hard. What you do, get your torch. Who's safety to? Who put the safety on? Let's give it a little bit of a clap, clap, clap. Warm it up real quick and a little psh, 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 to cool it down. And that always loosens them up for me. Just a little twist. And they should all come off nice and easy just like that. Okay, let's go ahead and install our new ones now. Now, when working on engines, you're always gonna find somebody who's got a little bit of a different tactic. Man, just, just go with what you know is right and if there's directions, directions are always right. So I'm just going to use a little bit of lubricating oil. On all my stems. Then we're going to take the new valve stem. I'm going to load it up. We're going to load this up on the special tool. It looks like that's good. Just need a little bit of oil too. Okay, now this tool rides right down the stem shaft and make sure that we get a very good seat, just like that. If you push that on with your hand, you'll never go perfectly straight and you'll always have a, um, a nick in there and that valve's, gonna, that valve's gonna leak. Be aware that some of these engines have different part numbers for the intake and the exhaust valve stem on these Subaru engines. They've been color coded very nicely, green for the bottom and grayish for the top. It doesn't need any more than just a good little bump like that, especially when you lube it up. I'll get the rest of them done off camera. Okay, everything's in, nice and good. I confirmed everything's seating very nicely. And if you're wondering what Subaru tool I'm using, there's your part number, but I'm pretty sure you can find some generic thing on the jungle side or eBay. All right, now we need to get our valve stems loaded up. You never want to put your valve stems in dry. You want lubrication. Now, when I'm assembling engines, I'm always using CRC, engine assembly loop. I love this stuff. Unfortunately, the spacing inside of our valve stems it's very close and that molly grease is just too thick okay uh, which you can use as an alternative wd-40 a basic penetrating oil something nice and thin you just want lubrication i've been really happy using the wd-40 chain lube because it has a, a no drip Now we just go ahead and grab our valve. I'm gonna see if I can do this one-handed on camera. Oh, I got it the first try. She's in. And that nice viscous oil, it's gonna hold my valve in place until I'm ready to put my springs and keepers in. I'll do the rest off camera. Okay. So we got all the valves inserted. I got the springs and the retainers installed. I didn't videotape it. You can, you've seen that done a hundred times. This tool is designed to put vacuum on the valve seats to make sure that they are sealing good. Uh, in the past, what we used to do is we used to do lapping and then we put machinist mark on there. We made sure everything was good. 
that's fantastic. I'm not building a hot rod, I'm building an Econo box. And this is all I really care about. So I have my vacuum set up here off of shop air. This is basically just working like a Venetri. So high pressure from the shop air is gonna blow through and it has a little pinhole opening where it's just gonna suck down vacuum. So the gauge is not 100% calibrated. You can see we're just below. That's okay. This is all I care about. All right. And I'm watching to see how long it bleeds off. That's good. I like that a lot. For a 100,000 mile engine without putting new valves and lapping the seats, I'm sorry, without changing out the valves and the seats, that's really good to see. I'm super happy with that. Let's check the next one. As some of you are wondering, yes, this is an airlift that I use for cooling systems. And an airlift is nothing more than that $600 gun that Goodson sells. I just ran that hose up in there. Use what you got, folks. Good vacuum. Real good. And I'm running 90 PSI shop air on this gadget. Perfect. Now, if I really wanted to get scoop them accurate, then I would be taping up all this. And I would be taping up all of this. But again, like I said, we're not uh, building hot rods here. This is, this passes for an economy car.